Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation. Well, this is going to be an adventure. I am standing here on Orange Street in Redlands, and I'm standing with Stella Stubbe. And Stella first wrote me a letter back when? In May of 1994. And you invited me to do what? To do, to do a film on the Glass Museum in the city of Redlands. And you are associated quite strongly Very with the Glass for, Museum. For many years, yes. You helped start this thing. Yeah, well, I wasn't the founder, but I got in soon after the museum was purchased. So yes. you wrote me that first letter and invited me to come, and then I didn't come. Right. So and I you wrote, invited me back. And in March of this year, <laughs> I wrote to you again, and you called me on the 24th of March to tell me in two or three months you'd do the museum, that you thought it would be a, a wonderful a video, which it will be. And uh, then, then you I, wrote me again. Yeah, a reminder, I think, maybe in July. <laughs> yes. She you, wrote me the third letter, reminded me that I had called her and said in a couple of months I'd be right, here. Right, right. So I am here because you were either going to run out of stamps writing me letters, right. or I figured I better just come, get this Very thing done. Very persistent. She right. is. Yes. But we're standing here in front of this wonderful little house. What's the story on the house? Well, this house was built in 1903 by an early settler in Redlands. And uh, then the, uh, I don't know how many years people lived in it, but it had been vacant, I think, for a while. And then some of us that like glass, Dixie Huckabee and her husband, uh, decided that we should have a glass museum in Southern California. And they purchased this building, which you'll see what it looked like at the time they purchased it, because we have some pictures it's inside. It's probably a mess. Wasn't oh, it? it was. There was a big vine that was growing in the parlor window, <laughs> and I don't know what all. It was a mess. Well, yeah. you've done a wonderful job yeah. restoring. The house itself is yeah. beautiful. It is. It's a very nice old house. But we are not here to see the house. We are here to see what's in that house. A uh, very true. Uh, all American-made glass from early time until uh, about the, maybe there's some in there that's from the 50s, but most of it is much older. Well, let's take a look. We're going to go inside and visit. What is the exact technical title of this museum? What is it called? The Historical Glass Museum. The Historical right. Glass yes. Museum in Redlands. Mm -hmm. And we're getting ready for the VIP tour led mm -hmm. by Stella. In we go. Now, where in the world do we start? Is there a starting point? Well, uh, we can start in this room, maybe, where the uh, um, Liberace collection is. The I think Liberace. Liberace. He passed away some years ago, and there was a large auction down at the um, convention center in Los Angeles, and some of us went there with the sole purpose of buying some of his glass, maybe one piece if we could have it for the museum. Just for but, nostalgia. Exactly. And now, how did you decide what to buy? Well, Dixie Huckabee and myself separated when we went on Friday to view the items. And it was strange, at the end of the day, we had chosen the same ah. items to bid on. And we thought, well, if we were be fortunate, we'd buy one. And as it turned out, we bought three items that we wanted Boy, to buy. Boy, these are yes. beautiful. Did and Liberace collect glass? Oh, well, yes, he had beautiful glass. This was from his uh, Los Angeles home. And uh, the auction was set up in different homes that he had wow. the items for sale. Oh, yes, he liked nice glass. Now, I am don't know where to start, and I'm really nervous with Louis in here with that big camera. Oh, I'm afraid he's going to hit something. Oh, Louis's going to be fine. We, I don't know whether we got enough insurance to cover oh. breaking all this glass or not. Now, I'd like you to see what I think is one of the many items we have that are very special, and it's this old spoon holder. Oh, can I? I'll hold that for Which, you. Can I bring it out? Yes, of course you can. Oh. Now, these, An elephant on the you top. can see it. Yes, it was called a Dumbo spoon holder. It's very impractical because the spoons are set in glass, and they only made it a very short time because it was not a practical item. And you would put this on the table, exactly. and then when you wanted a spoon, you yes. just had it. Yes. Oh, it comes right out. And that's but it was 
It, they were very often broken. This one has some damage. It was the only one I've ever seen, and I bought it for the museum. From what era would this uh, be? This is from, um, it was made by the Canton Glass Company in uh, eight, 1884. We're losing our spoons. Yes, and these spoons were this from up. my maternal grandmother's home, and she was married in 1854. Now, yes. I don't know and where to go. The, now, this, oh, you know where this to go. cabinet here is, is filled with Fenton glass. Fenton They're, glass. Fenton glass. They're celebrating their 90th business year this year. They're in business 90 years. Now, would glass people know what you mean when you say Fenton? Oh, yes. Fenton? Fenton's very popular. What, what makes Fenton glass... What, what the look of it, the design of it? Well, the... of course, they, they have made very fine glass now for 90 years. They make uh, many uh, collector items. For instance, this piece here was only made a very short time. Oh, it's it's beautiful. very elegant with the black trim. And uh, What would you use that for? This is just a basket for either uh, put on a table or candy. in a cabinet, look nice, you could use it for candy, or mints or something what like that. What is this? And that is what they call an apern. I'm going to let you hold yes. that. Yes, and a this pern. is a, an apern. And this is for fruit and flowers. It's a vase with then the fruit went in the bowl. So you'd put the fruit down here yes, and the flowers. And, yes. Ordinarily, this is a small set, but ordinarily they're much larger than this. And that it holds is so a great deal elegant. More. Yes, isn't it nice? Now, when yes. would that have been made? This, well, this was made during the uh, 1960s, so it's not really an old, old piece. And then, of course, here are many other nice so pieces. So this whole cabinet here is Fenton glass. Is yes. Fenton glass. Yes. And oh, all, look at the color all there. The, yes. Lots yeah. of beautiful colors. Yes. This, this is the pink, and uh, this is what, I, what they call a fan base. You can see why, oh, because yeah. it's in the shape of a fan. And it's in the velva, pink velva glass. Oh, and uh, it's a very elegant piece. Now, where do you get all of this glass? Uh, well, you buy it in shops and malls and so forth. People have collected it. But I mean, and do people donate glass to the museum? Oh, this has all been donated, yes, yes. If you, if you see the little uh, uh, cards. cards with each one, it, usually will give you a good bit of information about the piece and who donated it. And is so. this, look, it's got your name on it, yes. donated by Stella Stubbe. Yes, just, just recently I purchased this at an auction, and it's all leaded glass, very elegant, and oh. it fit in a museum. It's very similar to the Tiffany lamps. That is that were beautiful. Made. Isn't that a nice piece? Yes. And nice. let's move in the other room, although all we right. haven't even finished. There are two other cabinets in this yes, room. Yes, each room. And these are all custom-built cabinets that were made to fit this 1903 house. Well, let's start yes. over here. All I'm right. getting frustrated already. There's so much to yes. see. Yes, there is a great deal to see. And Look all of it very, very now, What's enjoyable. in this cabinet? Now, this cabinet has all very lovely hand-painted pictures, as you'll see, with reed handles and very elegant. And this is an unusual fry glass teapot. Can I pick that oh, up? Oh, you sure can. Yes. Oh, it's two pieces. Uh -huh. Yes, it has its own uh, trivet. And then the, it's, it's very lovely opalescent glass. And fry glass had been out of business many years. Fry glass. Uh, fry glass. That was the name of the company. Yes. And look at this one. Yes, isn't that beautiful? Oh, boy. All hand painted. Hand painted. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, and of course these beautiful baskets with the, uh, the a basket like this is what they call a thorn handle, and you can see why because it has all these little spikes in it, and then it has. Oh, the, it is. It's like thorns yeah, on right, there. and that's where it gets its name. And look at the handle. look at the angle it causes yes. at the mm -hmm. top. It yes. comes to a right, right angle. Very nice. And yes. look at the design down mm -hmm. here. Yes, lovely. It's very, um, what's the word I want to use? It's all very uh, frilly kind of stuff. Yes, much of it is, which was all done by hand. Uh-huh. Yes. And, and this is what we call Burmese glass. What is it? Burmese. Burmese. B yeah, Burmese. Oh, Burmese. Yes, right. 
look at this one. And really. yes, isn't that a gorgeous it's piece? Got a, it doesn't yeah. reflect. It's got this. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's uh, a it's a satin finish, and I guess and it's sure. fastened right on that so it doesn't come off in case of an earthquake. Oh boy, but, that wait a minute. That's the question. <laughs> yeah. This, what about earthquakes? Well, we just pray a lot when we have an earthquake. <laughs> but this is a satin glass, and it's done. It's done with an acid. So that that's why why it has that nice uh, satin finish. Mm -hmm. It's acid cut, and this lovely piece up here is uh, oh the one with the yes. three. Yes, this is a uh, Steuben. Yes, and oh. that's a very rare piece of glass. Oh, that's Steuben glass, which is made back in in uh, New York State, and it's very nice. What is that a vase? Yeah, it would be a vase. Yes, a three or a vase. vase. Yeah, I guess we have to call that one a vase because it really <laughs> is. Yes. Oh, oh, look over here. Now, this is the, this is my the grandmother had a lot of this. This is your cut glass from the brilliant period, which was about uh, 18, uh, 1890, I guess, to, the about, brilliant period. to about 1918. Yes. Oh, and this is all. This and this, the, see, this takes me yes. back to my childhood. Yes, of course. You, I remember my yes. grandmother had all of this mm. stuff. And the reason it was called brilliant glass is because each cut was polished. They don't do that anymore because that takes a great deal of time and people don't want to spend the time doing it and it would make it the glass today so costly. Oh, look at but this. But they're just all beautiful pieces. Now, is this valuable? Oh, very, yes. See, I, when you look at that, just think of all the work that went into that. All, and it was done freehand. The artists that did it, and this is very thick glass because they cut in it and if they weren't, uh, efficient, they'd cut right through it, and you'd have a hole in the glass. So they, but they just turn it and cut it as they do it because brilliant. This, glass. Yes, brilliant period glass. I yes. should take a little closer look at some of my grandmother's glass. I've got a lot of it I'm in my sure. house. Yes, uh, but it's all stored away because I don't really have any. Uh, you know, I don't bad. use this Well, stuff. and if you if you wish to donate it, any of it to the museum, we would be happy. And so I could, put, uh, in other words, I could donate oh, this glass. Oh, sure. We'll give you a tax write-off, and we'll put your name on it, donated by Huell House. Oh, you good. Bet. Absolutely. Well, my grandmother yes. would have liked that, I to have sure some of her stuff here. I'm sure she would. Oh, now we're moving into a whole other category. Yes. And these are paperweights, which are very collectible and can be very expensive. Yes, yes, oh, yes, I think it opens up. up. Yeah, we have another cupboard in the parlor, which is filled with beautiful paperweights also. So you really have all kinds of glass here. Yes, Not we do. Just hold it up. I'm going to yeah. take a look at. I'm afraid to touch this. Oh, you may. You may. Yeah. Look at this. It's very heavy, but unless you drop it, it's not beautiful. And it's very well done. And it, this is all what is artwork. It's either it takes a lot of training for somebody to be able to do this work. Oh boy, paper mm -hmm. well, Let's yes. put this down. I hear a lot of people laughing back here mm -hmm. in the back. What's going on back here in the... In the kitchen. What's going on back here in the back room back here? I'm trying to um, uh, go toward the door. I think I hear someone at the front door. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> is this where everybody's just kind of sitting around and talking? That's true. That's what we're doing, just talking and gossiping. Now, your title here is... I'm Dixie Huckabee. I'm the founder. The founder. I'm Wait a minute. Stand I'm, up here a I'm minute. I'm a guilty person, I now, guess. Now, how did you come about deciding that we, we, you needed a museum like this? Well, we, I've always liked glass, and I had a lot of glass in my own home, and everybody thought, well, we should have a museum. So I got a number of people together, and um, we worked real, real hard, but we finally have opened this place, and we'll be open 10 years. September the 17th, is it? Wow. Yeah, the 17th. So you've worked hard on this. All of us have. Not only myself, all of our board members and our members have worked very, very what hard. What did you start with? Your own private glass that you had and you all just kind of pooled it and started putting it in cases? Well, that's or? what most of the people did. They donated part of their own glass. Mm -hmm. yeah. What is this you're standing in front of? This is beautiful now, here. these are all small items in this case. And this is... Um, um, what is that made of? That, this is called jadeite. The green jadeite. jadeite. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the green. So it looks like jade, but it's glass. It's glass. It's glass. Uh -huh. Some pieces are old, and some of them are not quite as old. Boy, that is beautiful. Now, what yeah. are your duties as president of the Historical Glass Museum? <laughs> yeah. 
Well, we're just a jack of all trades here, you know. Everybody mm -hmm. pitches in and does what's necessary to be done. But we have a, uh, a regular work day, the third Wednesday of each month. We what do you do? Come in and dust the glass? Yeah. Dust <laughs> and clean the, clean the glass and do things that need to be done. And then we have a board meeting at the same day, you know. So now, how is this place run? Is this privately owned or? No, it's a, a foundation. Or, but we have a, uh, it's all just supported by donations and uh, membership and our gift shop. I see. So there's no that. other big money no, coming no, in. No, no. You wish there was, you wish there was but there's. Because our main problem is getting people to know that we're here. Everybody that comes in usually comes back, and they're so pleased with what they see. But to get them here to begin with the first time. Well, let's, wait a minute. Tell me about this. This is all kitchen stuff. Yes. See, this is the, was the kitchen. Here oh, before. let me stand over here, okay. and, and we'll take a look in it this way. Okay. Now, this is all jaded. We had a, a member who donated 700 pieces of jadeite to the museum. Well, this is more jadeite, yeah. but this is all, all, all kitchen, kitchen jadeite. Yeah, yeah. See, this is more primitive things that we have in here that people have Look donated. Look this little yeah. thing. Yeah. See? And uh, you can hardly find this anymore. There are oh, a few pieces. Oh, look. Yeah, see? Everything is just... Uh, yeah, they're all little measuring cups that just come right out. And then in another room, we have lamps and other things. But this is all kitchenware. All here. from one member. All from this one all came from one person donating it. And, and she sends us box periodically, you know, as she, she packs them up. Does and this just, open up? Yes. Because uh -huh. I saw something down here I wanted to take a look at. Look at these. These yeah, are old are mixing are. bowls. Yes. Uh, Aha! <laughs> look at this. Shape. Look at the shape. Yes, aren't they pretty? Uh-huh. Yes, boy. They are beautiful. Yeah. Now those, these are the kind of things that you would have seen in the kitchen back when? How, How long, long ago? The 1920s. So a lot of people would have taken all of this for granted yeah. and never known that someday it would be in a in a museum. Yeah, most of us would be, th you know, you, you're tired of seeing that stuff when you're kids and you get rid of it then when you, <laughs> but now, we're, as you get older, then it's too late, but here we're, then we realize how important it is. Well, know? I guess anybody who's watching who has any of this sort of thing or any kind of interesting glass, you're up for donations, oh, yes, aren't you? Yes, we would love to have, because the more we have, and because more people can under, uh, can see it. I mean, appreciate it, you know. Yeah. And in your home, why you're the only one that really appreciates it. So I think it's a good place to leave glass. This is totally different from any glass we've seen in the other cabinets. Uh, this is all carnival glass. This was made by the companies for the general public. But at the time, the general public didn't like it because it's a cheaper, gaudier type glass. Mm -hmm. You mean yeah. carnival? What do you mean carnival? Carnival glass. Okay, then the company sold it cheaply to the carnivals and theaters, and they gave it away as prizes. Oh, I see. Oh, uh, but now they're all collector's items, and this tumbler with the uh, tiger lily pattern on it is rare. Wow. And uh, so these... you really do have. Oh yeah. Stella, come here a minute. You really do yes. have a little bit of everything uh, in here. Oh, we, we want uh, a little bit of everything. That's a hat pin holder with the hat pins. Ha! Look at this. What the women used to wear years ago. Boy, that kind of dates this piece of glass. Yes, hat pins. When was the last time you saw a hat pin? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, this and is something. And the museum has rare pieces. Um, these four pieces are Be all careful. Oh, gosh. Are all custard glass. This is one that Stella donated. That's high C. Wait, wait a minute. I don't understand high C. What does that mean? Well, the company that made it, well, that was their name. Was high C. H-E-I-S-E-Y. And they very invariably, now this piece is not, well, yes, it is. See that diamond in the bottom with an H in it? Boy, you have and to they look not, to see they it. They didn't mark, yes, it is a little difficult to see. You just have to get the light right. Mm -hmm. But they didn't mark everything. But for sure, if it has an H with a, uh, in a diamond, you know it was made by high So seed. just yeah. the fact that it was made by this company, yes. which is no longer in existence, exactly. makes of, this valuable and interesting. That's true. And they've been out of business since the 18th or 1950s. Yes. Right. Back. 
and, and the piece there uh, is related to King Tut, the piece next to it, that piece in the center, King that face. Tut. Yes, it was, it was done during the 20s, during when they discovered the, uh, uh, the um, what do I want to say, the, uh, when King Tut was discovered in Egypt. And this is what influenced uh, a piece like this, the artwork on this piece. It's all cut. Yes. Was glass more popular years ago than it is now? Oh, I, don't, I don't believe so. I think it's been popular always mm -hmm. because they made a lot of it in England. And a lot of the glass people that were in Europe came to America and, of course, introduced it here. Now, so you told me this is all American glass. True, absolutely, yeah. Are Americans known now as good glass makers, or is it still a European oh, or some no, other? No, no, oh no. Many, many good glass companies uh, uh, sprung up in America, and the, this glass and a great deal, some of them are out of business, but like the Fenton glass people, I told you, have been in business 90 years, and they're still a very healthy glass company, and their glass is very fine. Well, now we haven't gone back into here. What's back in this back? Wait a minute. Let's get let's get yes, King let's Tut. Put King back. Tut back. Oh. Yes. So far, we've been in here for about 15 minutes, and we hadn't broken a thing. That's good. We don't want to break anything. Your boy, do we, we sure we? don't. Now we have been collecting state glass. Now, what do you mean by state glass? Each state has its own pattern glass, which dates back many of it back to the 1800s. And this particular uh, butter dish is, uh, is a ca cal called California beaded grape. This is the California state. Ah, so see, isn't good. That nice? Right. And this one is a very interesting also. This is Massachusetts. And this is called a rum jug. And the reason it was made in this way, it, they, it was illegal for them to uh, I have rum, but they put it in here and made it look like it was a teapot. <laughs> Absolutely, and this is how they transported some of the rum that was illegal. Wow. Yes. As, so as each one of these pieces yes. of glass comes from a different state. It, it, I've it, it, never it, heard of that before. And this is Alaska pattern here, this, which is rather unusual, very lovely. See, it's a footed piece. Well, how and, would you know that was from Alaska? Well, because the, our books, as, as Sue told you a little while ago, we learned this from our books. And this that was is, made in Alaska? No, no. No, it's made in the, it's, it was made here in the States. I'm not just sure. Oh, North, but, Northwood Glass made this. It's pattern glass made by Northwood. But it's, they named it for the state of Alaska. Ah. That's the idea. So each, really, there's a lot of, there are a lot of interesting yeah, stories. Instance, this is Texas. This cream it's awful sugar. small for Texas. Yeah, well, you're right, but <laughs> this was this is the Texas pattern, and this is the creamer and sugar bowl. Now I don't mm -hmm. understand. I don't see anything on there that looks no, like Texas. No, but it, that's it doesn't. There's not a steer on no, there. No, you're right. <laughs> or an oil well. Exactly. But anyway, it was named for. And there's all every one of these pieces in here represents a state. We have most of the state patterns. But not all of them. Now, I noticed something off, over off the side. I keep noticing things over people's shoulders while they're talking to me. This is more of this green stuff. This is what they call jadeite. But this is this is like a clock. Yeah, well, it is. Oh, a, it, look. Yes. Hold that. It comes right. in two pieces. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's electric oh. cloth with its own base. Now that is neat. Yes, isn't that lovely? And it's in it's in the slag glass. See your slag in the. It isn't solid green. It has that the some brown markings. Just a second. Let me Very good. Do a little bit more looking. Now this is all cosmetic stuff. Yeah, those are atomizers. Perfumers yeah, and atomizers. Exactly. Yes. All different types of glass. So this is made. from the bedroom. Or the or, yes. dressing room right, or whatever. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Boy, I'm, we made it through that one. And you got a lamp up here. That's true. Well, see, they made all sorts of things. Ah. And lamp. And in fact, this, believe it or not, is for a bird cage, a little feeding dish for a, that you fasten on the side of a bird cage. If you turn it around, you'll see where it oh. this slid in between the uh, metal. Uh, 
strips on a bird cage and the bird got the food in here. Made out of glass. Yeah, made out of glass, yes. So you're not surprised at anything you would see come in here no, made out really. of glass? No, if it's American made glass, that's what we uh, like to display. Oh, and, here's uh, a juicer. No, this. What, what is that? Have I found something it, you don't? Yeah, it, it, it is. It's a, for a manicure. You laid your hand here oh. and your fingers in here. I thought it was or, a juicer. Yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> it, it, in a way, it has some similarities <laughs> to a juicer. Right. Now, wait a minute. Here's another word I've never heard before. Stretch glass. Stretch glass, yes. What yeah. does that mean? Well, um, you can see how the glass has that iridescent stretch appearance to it. Mm -hmm. This is a little rose bowl. She has a very nice collection. But okay. all of it, you'll see, has the same finish, which is called stretch, stretch. Gr glass, yes. Boy, we have gotten, if people have stuck with us on this mm -hmm. tour, people have really gotten an education. Yes. I know yes. I have yes. in yes. glass. Okay. I've never mm -hmm. paid, I guess well, I'm not a glass person. That's the reason I was interested in you doing this, because we're the only glass museum on the West Coast, and many people do not know we're here. Or some people, if they've heard of us, they've put off coming to see what wonderful glass is here. And we'll hope this whets their appetite so they'll get here within the near future. Boy, so. I am. You have done more than whet my <laughs> appetite. This is the only glass museum on the West Coast of the United States, right here in Redlands. Yeah. You're open. Uh, Saturday and Saturday Sundays, and Sundays. From, four to two, uh, from noon until 4 o'clock. Okay, Saturdays and Sundays from noon to 4. Admission price? Admission free. Free. Uh, we, we have two contribution boxes that we hope if people have enjoyed seeing what is here that they might remember us. And, of course, we're open for museum members. And we like that. And they will get, we have a newsletter four times a year. So. It's so worthwhile to be a part of something like this. That well, I'm expensive. sure that a lot of the, that the hardcore glass people know about this already. But for those of you who are watching, like me, who didn't know much about glass before, if you know nothing about glass, it's worth a visit here for an afternoon to visit the Historical Glass Museum just to see all of this wonderful glass that is here on display and you are all to be congratulated for what you have done. You, you are truly doing something wonderful we for think, our state. We think so, yes. And thank you so much for being persistent and sending me well, that third letter. Thank you for being here. We certainly, and you always do such a marvelous <laughs> program. I know this is going to be just the best. Well, yes, this has yes. been our day here in Redlands at the Historical Glass Museum. Well, I don't think you ought to buy things just for value. It's something that you like. If you like it, it doesn't make any difference what kind of glass it is. It's valuable to you mm -hmm. as a person. And uh, I think that's how people get started on collecting glass. And then as they go on, on they get interested. And they look at a book and find out, say, well, that is worth something. Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation. Thank you.